Hi, I'm Ashley and welcome to Tip Ticks, where I share what I've learned over my career as a PowerPoint designer so I can make your life a little bit easier when designing your presentations. There are a bunch of PowerPoint creators out here on the internet and chances are if we work professionally, we're using Microsoft Office 365. It gives us a bunch of really amazing tools to use that you don't get in any of the older versions. But on most PowerPoint tutorial videos where we're using these tools, I see comments like this. So today I'm going to use a similar styling to one of the most popular videos I've seen on TikTok and teach you how to recreate that morph without actually having the newest version. So here we are with a blank slide. The first thing I'm going to do is change the background color so it's not just basic white. Next, I'm going to grab some stock imagery. You can pull from any stock site that you regularly use or image files you have handy, but I'm going to take advantage of my 365 subscription and use some of the built-in stock from PowerPoint. For this design, I want the images to have one outer rounded corner, so I'll go up to the crop menu and select the shape with a rounded top left corner and sliced top right corner. I don't really want the slice, so I'm going to straighten that out. Now back to the Home tab, I'm going to select a new shape. Diagonal rounded corners, this one. I'm not going to worry too much about matching its height because once I've drawn it, I can click on my image and go to Picture Format. These numbers right here are the best way of knowing if your elements are going to match up. I'm going to copy the height of my image, go to my rectangle, Shape Format, and paste it in. Since my rectangle has a stroke, but my image doesn't, it looks a little off, so I'm going to go and remove that stroke since I don't want it for my design anyway. I do want my image in front of my box, so I'm going to right click, send back or command B. For PC users, it's control shift left square bracket. That image is looking a little bit too big for my liking, so I'll go back to my crop tool and make it a bit smaller. Back into my formatting panel, and I'm going to turn this rectangle white. In selecting both elements, I'm going to the Align tool and I'll just make sure that they are perfectly aligned with each other. And time to add our title. Picking a nice font, making it a little bigger, and I'm going into my text options in my format panel and actually select a color for this text from the image itself. So I go into more colors, the eyedropper, and that looks good. Drop in my text and format it. I think I want a little more space between the lines, so I'll go into my line spacing options and make some adjustments. And I don't quite love it yet, so I'll do some quick fine tuning. Now I want this whole box to pop off the page, so I'm gonna select my rectangle and drag it so that it aligns with the edge of my photo. Then I'm going to go into Shadow and Drop Shadow. I find the default a little bit harsh, so I tend to add a little more blur. I think he's looking pretty good. So now that we have a base for how we want our slide to look, I'm gonna duplicate that slide and start on the next one. Hit Command D to duplicate the slide and right click on the image. Again, you can use any image you want. I'm just gonna use the handy stock image that Microsoft provides. Now modify the text and selecting a color from the image for the title. When I pasted my body text, my formatting disappeared. So I'm gonna go back up to my first slide, select my body text and hit the little format paintbrush, then go back to my second slide and apply it to my pasted text. Now we duplicate this design two more times or however many slides that you need for whatever content you're using. Now that we have everything set up, let's see why we don't actually need a morph transition for this design to go smoothly between slides. It's as simple as selecting all of your layouts, going up to transition, and selecting push. Let's see how it looks. Not bad. It's not as complex as morph, but for a design like this, it works just as well. For any other designs, I have three tips on how to ensure that your push transition presentation looks its absolute best. 
Let's check them out. Tip number one, use the same color background for all of your slides. This transition works best with a solid background since it's pushing the entire slide left, right, up or down. Different colors or gradients will get cut off during the transition. Tip number two, people love having logos in the same spots on all their slides. And normally that makes for a good consistent layout. But with this transition, those elements are coming along for the ride and it's a dead giveaway that these slides aren't morphing. The elements can be there, but maybe play with the layout, change the size, change up the placement. Bring that movement into your design look. And number three, watch where you place your graphic design elements and keep them from touching the page edge. Because this transition moves the whole slide, anything that's cut off will be cut off when it animates. So avoid putting elements on the left and right side if you're using horizontal push and avoid the top and bottom if you're using a vertical push. So I hope that was a helpful tutorial and I've appeased all of you yelling from the comment section saying that your version of PowerPoint doesn't have the morph transition. Check back soon for more PowerPoint tutorials, like and subscribe and comment below for what you want to learn next. Have a good one.